Okay friends, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this video is to demonstrate the display of purchase order. So I am accessing this through the T code which is ME23N and I leave it up to you people to search this T code in the easy access menu. So we go here ME23N and by default we are taken to the latest purchase order which was displayed. So if you want to see another purchase order, we just need to press this other purchase order button. Just like we did in the purchase requisition. So again, there is an option to call a purchase requisition or purchase order. So we keep on purchase order. Call number, for example, 240. We can just call the purchase order from here. And if the purchase order exists, the system will take us to the purchase order. So again, to understand the structure, I collapse all the uh, details so that we understand the basic structure so the first line contains the purchase order number and the vendor from which the purchase order is for which the purchase order is issued so then in the header again three parts of the document so in the header part we see that there are certain tabs but the important tab uh, for us is the first one is the organization data so in the organization data we see this which purchasing organization is actually taking care of this purchase order because we studied we discussed that a purchase order is always addressed to a purchasing department a purchasing organization and which purchasing group within the purchasing organization so this is the purchasing group the group of people who are dealing with a particular vendor or in a particular material or whatever the classification of uh, segregation of duties is within the purchase organization. So one purchase organization can have multiple purchase groups. And for which company code this purchasing uh, uh, order is being uh, uh, executed. So it relates to which company code. So, and there are many tabs here, but uh, the second important tab for us is the status. The status tab shows us that the order quantity was 10, the delivered quantity is zero, so the still to be delivered quantity is 10 and this is the total price of the purchase order the total value of the purchase order 114 dollars so invoiced is also zero so it means that this purchase order is just executed but there is no follow-up action because if there is only follow-up action on this purchase order if there is any gr uh, then it should have reflected here in the delivered quantity and then if there is subsequent invoicing from the vendor it would have reflected here if there is some down payment it would be shown here so this is the first part which is exactly actually the header part let's go to the second part item overview it will show us the items or ordered so the material code dolt 1000 the material description again this is the description in the german language because the company code which is ordering is the german one and we see the quantity 10 is the quantity and 11.4 euro is the price so 11.4 multiplied by 10 is the 114 dollars and we can see some other details over here for example which plant this <coughs> purchasing this commodity is requested to be delivered so it is requested to be delivered at the plant Helberg, Heidelberg uh, if I pronounce it correctly and then the corresponding information record number from which the price is drawn and if there is a corresponding purchase requisition uh, before this purchase order it would reflect here so since this is blank it means this purchase order is created from scratch without reference to any purchasing requisition so it is equally possible that sometimes in a smaller organizations practically we, we uh, create the purchase order straight away without a purchase requisition so this is the second this was the second tab there is just one item keep in mind and then the item details in the item details again the, you see there are many tabs so the material data tab shows the something about the material and the uh, conditions tab shows about the information about the prices and taxes and discounts and so on so you see that the gross price was $12 and there was a 5% discount 
so the net price is 11.4 dollars which is taken uh, in the item overview screen so conditions is all details about the uh, <coughs> monetary details about the product pricing and applicable taxes and discounts and trades etc so uh, there are many other items which are zero so uh, again these are general general for us so for most of them we are not concerned so we can call uh, this is how we, we we make sense of a purchase order uh, let's call another purchase order so let's call now purchase order number 242 and so this is the purchase order number 242 and we see in the status uh, again uh, let's start with the organization data so this is for the purchasing organization us double zero more relevant for us in english company code is us double zero and purchasing office n double zero and the status so order for 210 units for 24,000 us dollars and delivered are also 210 units but invoice are zero still to be delivered is zero so it means that for this purchase order, there must be a GR, uh, existing GR, but no invoice. Vendor has not sent an invoice yet. So uh, let's collapse this note and open the item overview note. So we have off-road helmet and road helmet 60 and 150 ordered. And uh, let's see the plant. So this, these are the prices, 25 and 150. So the plant is both are requested to be delivered at the Miami plant and the storage location is trading goods uh, this is the name of the storage location trading goods right we can see the list of values from here and this is information record and you see incidentally the purchase requisition number it means here that this purchase order is actually a conversion of a purchase requisition it is a follow-up action on a purchase requisition so this way we can make sense of some information here and now let's go to the item detail tab. So there are two items. So in the item detail tab, we shall have an option to move up or move down. So this is the first item and we can go from on to the second item as well. So this is the second item you see here. The important tab here is the purchase order history. You see this tab was not there in the last purchase order that we displayed because simply because in the last purchase order there was no purchase order history the purchase order was only executed and there was no follow-up action so we could cannot find purchase order history button here but since this purchase order has been delivered maybe partly or fully if for any purchase order there is a subsequent delivery part delivery or full delivery then we would see this purchase order history button here and this is very important for us we leave the conditions discussion of the conditions because the net price we can already see from the item overview which is 25 and uh, we can see 25 and 150 so the important tab for us is purchase order history so in the history we see that uh, uh, goods receipt has been executed for this purchase order so there is a goods receipt number here as well and if i click it the system takes me to the particular gr you see display material document so we are taken to the gr so we shall discuss the gr in the next video so we go back and we see again here that the GR and it is for a quantity of 150 for this item and so the, it was the item number so, so the, for item number one the quantity was 60 uh, and the, for item number two the quantity is 150 so both items have been received it is equally possible that a particular for, for a particular purchase order we just have received one item and maybe partial delivery of one item but for this particular purchase order we see both the items have been received and we also see the GR number. We can go to the GR uh, by double clicking, clicking it. But we don't see any information about the invoice here uh, because we see in the status of the purchase order, right? Uh, status we can see here. So status that uh, although the delivery has made, there is no invoice yet. So that's why we don't see any invoice related information <coughs> over here. So uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, sometimes some, some student can come up with a question, what's the difference between the status and the history? Why uh, two different buttons? So keep in mind that in the header, the status is for the overall purchase order. It's not for item wise. So although the quantities were 60 and 150 in the status, we will see the, only the totals, 
right we don't see item wise details and the document numbers but in the document detail over, uh, uh, in the document detail uh, over here we can actually see the history item wise and detail wise so for item number two it is this one and for item number one uh, it is this one and there are gr numbers although in this particular purchase orders uh, same gr is for both the items but they can be different and if there is an invoice we can see the information of the invoice over here as well so i assume this is clear now now let's see what if we don't know the purchase order number so we go to a purchase order again and we see we don't know the purchase order number so we go to the search and again i have kept it to the purchase document for material you can adjust it to whatever you want there are so many options but uh, this is the one which is relevant for us so if uh, i want to see purchase orders for miami plant for example mi00 i can just and you see there are a total of uh, <coughs> 43 entries found right and now 43 entries doesn't mean actually 43 purchase orders it means 43 items within the purchase order so you see this purchase order 96 number has been shown twice because there are two purchase order items within uh, the purchase order so it is not the number of purchase orders the number of items within the purchase order so we can call any one of them and show from here let's say i want uh, uh, to have uh, another search uh, not by plant but by particular material so I want TRFR 1000. This is the particular material I'm concerned with. There is no uh, value. So let's say OHT 1000. Uh, again, I'm sorry, this is it should be 1000 or 1000. So we need to enter the code of the material here. So there are two <coughs> purchase orders 127 and 243 for this particular material. Uh, we recall purchase requisitions uh, were only two, also two, so the purchase order. So we call this one, and again we see in the header that uh, this is the one we actually we actually visited. I think uh, just uh, uh, right. So anyway, the uh, the point is, K, we can uh, search for a purchase requisition, based, purchase order based on a material or based on a plant, and then we can display that purchase order. So this is how we make sense of uh, a purchase order which is already executed. Although there are transactions um, uh, like when in, in this particular transaction, this is ME23N, which you can see here. Uh, let's see. So which I have set this to the transaction code, transaction ME23N. With ME22N, we can change a purchase order with me 21 and we can raise a purchase order. Uh, but this is beyond the scope of our discussion at this point of time. So that's it. Uh, thank you. <clears throat>